I'm not here to tell you losing LCS finals to minions is embarrassing, but it's kind of embarrassing. Anyways, today we're going to be taking a look at Game 4 draft of Team Liquid vs. FlyQuest in the LCS Finals this past weekend. And let me tell you, my friends, this is a great example from FlyQuest of how to use an effective counterpick on R5. I've been calling for so long for someone to use an actual counterpick into the Cassante or the Renekton in top lane. Someone finally did, and guess what? It worked wonders. So Team Liquid start off by first picking Lilia on blue side, which is really, really nice. Uh, super OP champion, just in every facet, really fast clear speed, crazy damage and skirmishing, uh, crazy team fighting, really tanky honestly with all the health she gets through uh, her items, and just a really annoying champion to play against. Really, really good first pick from Team Liquid. FlyQuest go ahead and first rotate Corky and Leona. The Corky's really good. I think that's the strongest mid laner in the game, or at least one of them uh, with the current Marksman meta, so absolutely no problems with that. I think the Leona pick is a little bit weird just because you're blinding support so early. Usually in competitive, you want to save support for a little bit of a later pick to get an advantageous lane mashup, but out of the meta tank engaged supports that are available, Leona's definitely the best one. Team Liquid go in second rotate, then Tristana and Cassante. Tristana pairs well with the Lilia with the AD AP combo in mid jungle, so it doesn't make itemizing Merc Tread so easy for the enemy team. Tristana's also just one of the best mids available. Even though she gets she's gotten nerfed quite a few times, she still does well into the Corky in lane. It's a pretty even lane matchup, and she scales ridiculously well, uh, as everyone knows. And rounding out with first phase, we have Cassante for TL and Ivern for FlyQuest. The Cassante also just doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. Uh, it's just kind of random. If you want to pick an actual frontline and like committed tank for your team, I highly recommend Malphite or Orn currently. Since uh, Marksmen are so popular in the meta, Malphite and Orn, champions who can really stack armor, are really, really good. And then the Ivern over on FlyQuest side is obviously fantastic. Scales really, really well alongside the Corky. is going to be able to buff him up really well. And into the Tristana, it also does well uh, just in general because Redemption, Shields, it's going to be really hard for that Trist and whatever other Marksman TL end up picking to cut through those, those shields and heals. And here we go, guys. The big moment of this draft is on R4 when FlyQuest pull out the Garen counter pick into Cassante. I've been saying for ages, the three biggest counters into Cassante are Fiora, Gwen, and Garen. Nobody ever picks those champions. It's just Renekton Cassante every single game. But guess what? Bwipo goes ahead and pulls out the Garen in, on R4 into Cassante. And guess what? This utterly destroyed the game. Even though it ended up being really close, that was more of FlyQuest decision-making and misplaying than the top lane matchup. But Garen destroyed this game. He built really well with Stridebreaker into pretty much full crit from there with things like PD and Infinity Edge. Uh, really, really great stuff from Bwipo on the Garen, and I'm so glad a real counter pick worked out. Uh, Team Liquid go ahead and finish out with uh, Kai'Sa and Rel. This also just doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. I really don't like Kai'Sa because everyone goes to on-hit uh, Kai'Sa build with Ginsu's and Nashers and that stuff. AP Poke Kai'Sa is just flat out her best variant and is game breaking and it's uninteractive, but no one actually does it. Uh, so this Kai'Sa is not going to get a whole lot of value because she's into Garen and a lot of CC like the Leona. She's also going to get outscaled and outranged by things like Corky and Zeri. So guys, here we are in the game, and if you actually watch through this game and watch the gameplay of it, uh, specifically to do with the top lane matchup, you'll see that the Garen and the Cassante didn't interact much in the lane phase, but the moment where Garen really becomes a hard counter to Cassante is in the mid and late game side lane. And what you can do with Garen then, why this is a counter matchup, is because you can take really quick trades and then just back off with Garen, and you basically have a Warmogs built into your passive, and that's why this champion is so OP. Obviously, it kind of works with any Garen matchup, but it specifically works well with Cassante because he doesn't have any sustain, and he doesn't really do a whole lot of damage uh, past the lane phase. So you'll see Garen is able to take really easy trades against the Cassante and just kind of walk into the wave and do whatever he wants, and then he can just back off for a couple seconds, heal up with his passive, and eventually he's just going to out-sustain the Cassante and be able to take control of that matchup in the side waves really, really easily. So this is why Garen is so good into Cassante, but just in general as well, in the team fights this game, Garen's able to run rampant. This champion is so OP because he's really versatile. You can do a lot of different things with him. Even though he's really linear in terms of theme, he just kind of runs at you and does Garen things. He's versatile in the sense that you can either side lane with him with this phase rush uh, that's really OP, and if enemy team overloads to try to kill you, you basically just run away at a million miles an hour and your team has advantage on the other side of the map 
or you can join team fights like Bwipo did this game and just completely melt enemy squishies. The damage is utterly ridiculous. You can basically kill people from half health with your ultimate because it does percent missing health true damage. It's just so such a ridiculously OP ability. You can see it right there, how much damage the Garen does, just with Stridebreaker and a Zeal. Uh, he ended up getting, I think it was PD, Mortal Reminder, and Infinity Edge this game. He did so much damage. Obviously, Bwipo had a couple misplays, uh, especially in a late game team fight where he tried to hero play and go in 1v4. That obviously didn't work out and ended up uh, creating a little bit of a, a misplay for FlyQuest as a whole. But just watching through this game and just the highlights here, you can see how effective Garen as a counter pick is. You can see how unkillable this champion is in team fights and just how much damage he actually does. That's another really OP thing about Garen is that his passive, I believe, on his W scales up your armor and magic resist so ridiculously much. So what Whippo did this game, you can do really effectively, is just build damage, but you're still going to be crazy tanky because you have some health from Stridebreaker, but you have so much resist from your W passive, it's crazy how tanky this champion gets by building no tank items. And so as a whole, this game four was obviously a really banger game and Team Liquid did end up losing to minions in the end. If you haven't watched the game, I highly recommend going to watch at least the ending because it was absolutely hilarious. I thought it was really funny too how FlyQuest, their players didn't even know how to react to winning the championship like that. All their players were like, what just happened? Uh, they, they won the LCS championship with minions. So it was definitely an interesting game uh, to watch, really entertaining, but I'm really, really glad that a Cassante counter pick was finally picked and that it was really successful as well. So huge props to FlyQuest, huge props to Bwipo as well for playing it, and hopefully this opens the door for more counter picks, actual hard counter picks on R5 in the future. Now, as we look forward, FlyQuest is officially the first seed for the LCS in World Championship. Everyone thought it was going to be Liquid. Everyone thought Liquid was just going to kind of roll through the playoffs and win the championship easily. I was definitely in that same boat. I thought that this team was looking insanely good heading into playoffs. Here you can just see just how broken Garen is, uh, how much damage he does. Um, but everyone thought Team Liquid was going to be the first seed going into Worlds. Uh, again, I was I was one of those people as well. There's a lot of questions surrounding this team now, whether or not they can get their uh, great form back heading into Worlds. Honestly, it's not even like they played horribly. They definitely didn't play up to their potential, but FlyQuest just hit a really huge resurgence uh, and got super hot at the end of the split here. So they're just looking way better than they did. I think they definitely won this series rather than TL losing it. But I'm really interested to see how these teams uh, enter into Worlds because FlyQuest's two international appearances earlier this year were horrendous and Liquids were quite good. So maybe we'll see a little bit of a flip-flop here with the LCS teams. Maybe we'll see some more consistency out of either of them, which would be great. I'm just looking for them in international competition, both to be able to challenge Eastern teams. And I want to know that the gap between East and West is closing. Hopefully that can be the case and hopefully they can perform well at Worlds. Anyways, guys, that's going to wrap it up for today. Really glad to see Bwipo pull out the Garen pick. Again, Garen is such a good matchup in the Cassante, along with Garen and Fiora. So if you're drafting in competitive, always take advantage of R5 counter picks, really. Don't just pick a quote-unquote meta champion that's strong. Actually pick something that counters and get a really advantageous matchup for yourself. Thanks for watching. See you next time.